Hi, I'm Jack Buffington for Hackaday.com. Today we're going to talk about brushed DC motors, like this, that you commonly find in toys and other battery powered devices. Right here I have a small motor. This is a motor that I use very often in the projects that I build. I've already bent out the retaining tabs that hold on the back of it. I'm just going to pull it apart here. If we look at the back of this motor, we have the bearing, which there's a little bronze bearing in there. And then we have right here, these are the brushes. Now this is a little bit better of a quality motor than normally what you will find in a toy motor. Uh, this one actually has little graphite blocks. And what this allows it to do is handle higher current. And I understand that it may last longer too. Other, other motors, or most, most small motors like this that you'll find will just have, uh, I forget what type of metal, but the brushes will be just metal coated with some other type of metal that has good wear resistance. Going on to the motor, inside here we have what is called the armature. And this is a, a bunch of very thin pieces of steel that are force fit onto the motor shaft. Around that is wrapped uh, wire, copper wire, that is coated with uh, an enamel or some sort of uh, non-conductive coating. This isn't just plain old bare wire. Uh, if you were to buy this, it would be called magnet wire. Right here is the commutator of the motor. And in this motor it has three poles, uh, which would mean it has three separate places that it can touch uh, and make contact with. I don't know if you can see that in the video here, but we've got a little dividing line between the two pieces of copper here. In a bigger or more expensive motor, you may have five, six, ten different uh, poles in that motor and uh, you actually may find that this uh, the armature is skewed so instead of being parallel to the the shaft it may be at a bit of an angle like this and what that does for you is this motor will have a little bit of a cogging effect so as you turn it slowly it'll sort of want to jump 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 like that, whereas one that has its uh, armature skewed doesn't have that same effect, but it's, it's apparently more expensive to build it that way, otherwise these cheap ones would, would have skewed ones. So the uh, commutator goes down to these little terminals here, which connect up with the, the coils in the motor. What these coils do is they form electromagnets. So as uh, the, uh, the rotor is rotating, the electromagnets uh, are being connected in various ways. So in, for example, if it's oriented, say like this, and you have your brushes making contact here and here, it might be energizing this so that it, north is facing this way, but as it rotates over here, north uh, actually should, uh, I forget which way, but anyway, it's, it's alternating the, the direction that the electromagnets are made. So uh, if we look at the uh, stator of the motor, there are two magnets and they are creating a magnetic field that goes this way in the motor. So as this rotates around, they're trying to align themselves, but the brushes are skewed at such an angle that they can never quite get there, and that's what causes the motor to rotate. In more expensive motors, what you'll find is you'll have the ability to adjust the uh, angle that the brushes contact the commutator. And by doing that, you can change the speed and torque of the motor. 
You can also change uh, which direction it tends to favor. So uh, if, it, if it has neutral timing, it will spin equally fast in both directions. And if it's rotated one direction or the other, it'll favor one way in speed and one way in torque. So I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to rewind a motor today. As you can see in this motor, it has extremely fine wire in here. I'm not sure what gauge that would be. It's something, something like a 28 or 30 gauge wire. Here is a armature that I have removed the magnet wire from and I will be re rewinding it with, uh, I believe it's 24 gauge wire, uh, which I have right here. You can buy this wire at Radio Shack, uh, which is what I did. I just bought a three pack. Now the first thing that we have to do is we have to remove the uh, non-conductive coating from the outside of this wire. Some people recommend taking a lighter and burning it off and then taking a piece of sandpaper. I for this case, I want to be a little bit more precise with what I'm doing, so I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and carefully scrape this off. And that's because I want to make sure that the different windings don't come in contact with each other. So here I've pretty much got the enamel off or whatever this is on this. And I'm going to solder this onto one of the terminals. So there it is. Now I'm going to wind this electromagnet and what I would like to do is keep these as even as I can get them and I want to count how many turns so that's four six seven eight nine So you notice that I've brought the magnet wire over to here and here's where I need to strip a little bit more insulation off of the wire. So I'm going to do that now. And I use 13, 13 turns. I'll just solder this on. <laughs> this wire is so stiff it makes it a little tricky. Now you might be asking, why would you want to rewind a, a motor? Well, one reason would be that it broke. Uh, of course, that's no fun. This is Hackaday. So, Let's look at uh, another reason, which would be that you want to change how something operates. So, for example, this motor here that has all kinds of coils, uh, a very thin wire, but uh, lots and lots and lots of windings, will run relatively slowly, but have a lot of torque. 
This motor with only 13 turns will run very fast but have almost no torque. And uh, the downside of this one as well is that it will draw a lot of current. Anyway, I'm going to wind this one now. Okay, so I've gotten this rewound now. I had wound too many windings and I just couldn't get it all in there. Uh, now I've wound 11 windings on each of these uh, three poles. And I'm going to put together the motor. I'll first start by fitting this through the brushes, which there they are. Slip that back in. I'll just bend my retaining tabs back down. So, I've done the same thing with another motor where I put 26 gauge wire on it. This, this uh, motor was 22 gauge wire. So I'll just mark that right here. And then finally I have the regular old motor as it came from the factory. So for each of these motors I've taken and put a small polyethylene disc that I press fit over the motor shaft. Uh, I'll just do that right now with this other one. down and then I have some double stick tape that I'm just going to cut a little piece out so I can stick to that little disc and finally I have an index card that I am going to draw a line on and you'll see why I'm doing this in a second here. There we go. Flip that over. And I'm just going to peel off the rest of that double stick tape. And do that. And I'll stick it onto the card. And these leads here are coming from a battery pack. Oops. Just turn that on. Drew a convenient little circle. And now I'll just go ahead and cut that out. I have the motors here with the paper disc on it. And these are simulating model airplane propellers. And I have a tachometer here that I will point at this and it'll tell me my RPMs. So I'm going to connect this up now. This is my normal motor, unmodified. And I am reading this as about 2100 RPM. 2,100 RPM. Now I, I brought a meter to show what the current was for these, but unfortunately that meter just can't deal with the fluctuating current. It just doesn't give me a reading. So, so much for that. But pretty much the thicker the wire, the more current it's going to draw. Here is the wire that I previously wound with 26 gauge wire. 
I spun that up. You can probably hear it. It's running a lot faster. This one's running at about 9,100 RPM. Finally, I have the motor that I just wound with just 10 turns of uh, 22 gauge wire. Crank that one up. This one's going to go even faster. And I am reading this one as 11,000, it's sinking down, I think, well, roughly 11,300 uh, RPM. This one, I have no idea how much power it's drawing, but it's probably almost a dead short is my guess, but who knows. Uh, so, for Hackaday.com, this is Jack Buffington with info about motors.